Lahura Deva is a village in eastern Uttar Pradesh. This site studies show that it has been occupied since as early as 10,000 BC. And by 7000 BC, it provides the oldest evidence of pottery in India and not only India, in the entire South Asia. Excavations here reported the earliest archaeological sites in entire South Asia for the cultivation of rice. This study is based on findings by Rakesh Tiwari, R.K. Srivastava, K.S. Saraswat, I.B. Singh, and K.K. Singh, and it was done almost 20 years ago. Most content and the photos were done, were clicked by them, and is a part of their research paper. Now, the investigations here started from excavations carried out at a lakeside settlement in Lahura Deva. So, there was a lake, and there were many settlements beside this lake. And this investigations and excavations were carried out from 2001 to 2006. On the basis of consistent presence of micro charcoal in the nearby lake, the human activity was considered to be going on in this area since more than 12,000 years. The presence of micro charcoal observed in 28 sediment samples of the Lahura Deva Lake is an indicator of regular fire events caused by human activity in the catchment area of the lake during the last 12,000 years. The site was brought to light by a resident of Lahura Deva and his name was Krishnanand Tripathi. There is an archaeologically well-defined record of settled life at this site from the beginning of early farming traditions characterized by rice cultivation from 7th millennium BC onwards and spanning for several thousand years up to about 200 AD. So initially, a husk clot of domesticated rice was dated to 6400 BC. This phase also showed evidence of wild mammals being utilized for food like the gore, sambar, spotted deer, wild pigs, porcupine, mongoose, hare and common squirrels. Species of birds like chicken were also consumed and there were also remains of at least four species of freshwater fishes, fishes like the catfish, the bowl fish and the famous rohu fish that the Bengalis eat apart from freshwater mussels. Important associated cultural components include quite a good number of beads made of steatite which are comparable in size, shape and manufacturing techniques with those of the Harappan tradition. Besides, an example of carnelian is also noteworthy. These beads have been found right from the lowest levels. Important items excavated also include copper artifacts from its lower deposits. Most significant among them are a copper arrowhead and a fish hook used for fishing. Now going into the specific details, the excavations revealed the deposits of five layers. The period one, the earliest, was an early farming phase. Coarse variety of handmade red wire and black and red wire industry often displaying cord impressions on the interior surface was found. The faunal remains included some bones and a tortoise shell. Plant material consisting of incidentally carbonized material included a few grains and gloom pieces of rice, conforming morphologically to those of the domesticated form which is the Oriza sativa. A few painted pot shirts, some terracotta and stone beads and a few micro steatite beads were the noteworthy commodities in the cultural assemblage. Charred and uncharred bones showed cut marks. Wattle and daub dwellings were also noticed. In the period 2, which was the developed farming phase, beginning from about 2000 BC, was characterized by an acclaimed presence of copper artifacts. Earthen storage bins, baked terracotta tiles, legs of some terracotta objects, steatite beads in fairly large numbers, some lithic artifacts, beads of semi-precious stones, socketed and tanged bone and antler arrowheads, 
with ravishing micro encircled decorations and many other things indicate considerable spurt in the material prosperity in this region in addition to customary dwelling structures rammed earthen floors hearths and mud wall augment to to show that improvement in the settlement plan are also present the growth of the population would have been extensive plausibly due to increased sedentism and clustering of human groups as to the need to exploit arable territories around the site for sufficient means of agriculture then in the period 3 it was an advanced farming farming and and it was the early iron age marked by the appearance of highly rusted iron artifacts about 80 cm thick occupation deposit of this period comprised of all types of ceramic industries of the earlier period as well important iron objects included sickles earthen floors hearths burnt clay lamps with reed and straw impressions indicated the continuation of earlier structural traditions bone and antler arrowheads and awls were present in good proportion the period 4 it was characterized by a well known northern black pottery ware phase and in period 5 which is the early historic and it includes from the early centuries of the bc and the turn of the ad some structures such as a brick brick waved brick paved well and remnants of some ground plan of a brick structure comprising a few rooms and typical sherds in red wire known from the deposits of early centuries of bc and ad at various sites were represented in the deposits of the period 5 based on the five stages and other investigations rice based agriculture was prevailing in at least in an area extended from the himalayan terai to the northern vindhyas during at least 7000 bc onwards a diffusion of rice cultivation from the ganga plain to harappan zone was also suggested during the 3rd millennium bc when the rice is documented on several sites in haryana and punjab you know from about 2850 bc onwards pulses of tectonics which are basically earthquakes caused up the warping of the landscape by few meters which would have lowered the groundwater and may have contributed to the formation of calcrete and the virgin deposit of sand represents the deposit of a small water channel disruption of this channel and its filling could have taken place before the human settlement of this area there was aridity noticed during about 5000 to 4000 before present and warping of the landscape may have plausibly led to a temporary abandonment of the occupation site the size of the prehistoric grains have also been used as a criterion for differentiating between domesticated and wild forms of rices this is to ensure that skeptics who might just say that these are still samples of wild rice and no not domesticated ones have been taken care of in the light of early evidence of domesticated rice from lahura deva the picture is now clear with regards to the beginning of agriculture in the middle ganga plain during early post glacial times as it happened in west asia and china on the basis of this present evidence this is a region of innovation in the origin of agriculture in india and southeast asia it is noteworthy that the paleolithic artifacts found from the shivalik hills in the nepalese terai bahadurabad in upper ganga plain and mau and kalpi in the middle ganga plain and the presence of micro charcoal at sanaital demonstrate that human activities were going on in the ganga plain from the paleolithic times however the consistent hunting gathering and exploitation of the flora and fauna seems to have been continuing from the terminal pleistocene times in this region the corded pottery right from the lowest levels at lahura deva jusi and koldiva etc datable to about 10th millennium bc is an evolved form it is only logical to surmise that the ceramic traditions had an even earlier beginnings in this region at the present there are more than 160 sites which are identified as neolithic or chalcolithic comprising cultural deposits of pre nbpw period from the middle ganga plain 
suggesting that considerable expansion in this area of occupation and accelerated agricultural production from much earlier times. On the basis of the authentically identified remains of domesticated rice, it can be expected that the picture of the early beginning of agriculture in this region will be changed even further backwards. Nature of the remains and the grains by which the rice has been identified seems to be sufficiently advanced. It is surmised that a certain level of cultural complexity and agricultural practices would have been a necessary prerequisite in still earlier stages of cultural evolution somewhere in the middle Ganga plain. Otherwise, this status of rice domestication could not have happened at Lahura Deva during 9000 BC. This ties up very well, you know, in the conclusion, this ties up very well with the findings of a recent paper by Dr. Neeraj Rai and Dr. Vasant Shinde and their team, which said that agriculture in India had an indigenous origin. And this, this paper this shows that it probably had its origin in the Ganga plain and then moved to the Indus Valley region, not from the Iranian plateau to the Indian plain. So let's, so we'll have to see how future papers come and corroborate this theory.